Hey community, today I am here with Jessica Wolf and she's a mycologist who has taken her passion for growing mushrooms and wild foods and turned it into a really, really cool business called Grow Mushrooms Canada. Today she's gonna to share with us how we can at home grow our own food, create our own food sovereignty and really build up our health through working with mushrooms. Whether this is on logs like this, in sawdust, in coffee grounds, in so much more. So I'm really excited to have you today to explore the world of cultivating mushrooms for ourselves. Although you could be this is all there, right? This is Jessica, it's such a pleasure to be here with you, learning more about mycology and what you're doing is amazing. I, I'm really like, I just see this evolve and so I really wanted to interview you and get to know what got you into growing mushrooms and how you got to this place of producing all these really cool fruiting bodies and educating and, and so much more. I've been really excited about um, all things wild, mm. really. Uh, I love getting out in nature. I have a background uh, in biology and I was out foraging in the forest with my friend. He showed me how to pick chanterelle mushrooms in the forest. Mm. I got so excited about mushrooms. Right? Had to learn every single kind of mushroom that I could pick and eat for myself. And then I got wind that I could grow them myself and I didn't have to wait for the fall. So now, Which is I, amazing. now Super I can empowering. grow mushrooms all year round, all sorts of varieties, uh, both um, for the food value and also for the medicinal values. Mm. So it's I love that. Exciting. That's something is that you're actually growing different types of medicinals here and also a lot of food. Like I, we saw the shiitake logs and is that, that's how you got started, right? Was Yes, yeah, that was the first thing. We put our feelers out there for sources of wood. There's trees coming down all over the place for all sorts all of reasons. Time. People are clearing for development. So we had a farmer contact us who was uh, wanting it cleared for his uh, cow pasture. Mm. So we went and we harvested the, the trees and we put them to good use growing mushrooms. So we had thousands of shiitake wow. logs in rotation and yeah. selling them to uh, farmer, at farmers markets and uh, to restaurants. I think that's a big thing that I, I is just so empowering is how you can take something that's a waste material and turn it into a, a whole business in a farmer's market or for restaurants or for self. So absolutely. Maybe take us through that process a little bit. Like, what does that look like? Well, there is a mostly invisible uh, organism growing out there that is the body of the fungus. The and mycelium. The mycelium. And so this is just a bag of sawdust with a bit of extra nutrients, wheat bran. And we plant the fungal mycelium in it. And inside it grows. And then all you have to do is cut it open, keep it humid, and it'll make some mushrooms that you can eat. But there's a lot more that you can do with this bag. You can take the fungal mycelium from inside the bag and plant it into a variety of different substrates. It could be into logs like we did with the shiitake. It could also be into buckets of straw or wood chips. You can plant garden beds or just put the mulching around your raspberry plants. It's really versatile and that's low maintenance, easy outdoor growing. Super easy. And I know that like this whole movement of radical mycology into like creating your own food in all these different waste materials. You've got a bunch here, different substrates that people can grow on. And what they could do is they could take one of these bags and then repurpose it, is what you're saying. They could, absolutely. Yeah. I've dabbled in this and to me, this is one of the most empowering things for people in general is just starting to produce their own food. These taste amazing. They have that umami piece to them that's just really brings the flavor to all the other foods. And when you grow it yourself, uh, just that whole connection back to the food chain is, is an empowering one. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's not very expensive to, to, to get into, really, is it? Like, not if you can, if not if you have those simple tools to how to make the most out of your bag of mushroom spawn. Which to me is, I think, maybe the, the bigger piece is that as the world changes, uh, having some of these tools, having some of this awareness is a really important piece of our own security in the world. It so. is, yeah. 
So why don't you take us through the journey of a mushroom? How does it grow? What's the basic cycle of it? For sure, that's important to know because you've got to work with, work with nature is what we're doing. Right. So mushrooms, they've got a purpose and it's to make spores. It's kind of like the seed of a mushroom. It's a fruit. Uh, yeah, yeah, so the spores, they're actually invisible little things, but they make so much of them. I had a giant mushroom on this and uh, it let, dropped its spores onto here. So the wow. spores are like little seeds of the mushroom and they disperse in the wind and they go and they find some kind of rotten dead wood to grow on and they grow on the wood and then they make more mushrooms. So in nature, mushrooms produce spores from the fruiting body, which then go into the environment, growing more mushrooms out from the logs and the dead material, right? How does it work in the lab or growing out these bags or grain spawn or the wood dowels? How does that, how do you do that? Well, we're taking advantage of the fact that the mushroom likes to decompose things mm -hmm. and that makes them very easy to grow. So if we, we choose the mushrooms like oyster mushrooms, shiitake, lion's mane are all primary decomposers. They grow on wood material. So we could have just sawdust, for instance, because that's a, a material that they like to grow on. Kind of like uh, getting a transplant from a tomato plant. The fungal mycelium will expand and expand and expand if you just keep giving it more food. So that's the basic principle. You Which is amazing, keep, right? You just want to give it more food. Mm. You want to keep it humid. Right. And it'll grow mushrooms for you. So you control the environment and give it more food. Right, makes sense. Um, what kind of environments, so I, I know that there's a little bit of different environment for like growing versus the mycelium running. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Like what that process is like? There are um, a few different stages. Mm -hmm. um, the, the first thing that we do, we have our cultures in our uh, culture storage mm -hmm. and the mycelium is growing in a petri dish. On agar, and, kind of a and we, science lab the, type the, look. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We've got a lab in there with a sterile airflow. So we kind of do the behind the scenes, what requires, All the hard work, a, really. what requires a lot <laughs> more uh, high level of uh, sterile work environment so that we don't introduce mold and contamination into the cultures. Right. Right, because for, for those of you who don't know, there are mushroom spores everywhere, all through the air, in every environment. You're breathing them in all the time. So the laminar flow hood type sterilized environment is really crucial, right, at that yes, beginning step. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. So we've got the mycelium fungal culture on a Petri dish. We, in the lab, we transfer that into grain spawn. Yeah. And so we've got, we're using rye. Like this. Yeah, exactly, like that bag there. We're using uh, rye grain, which it, we get from a Canadian farmer, So, but there's lots of other grains that people will grow. And once you've got a bag, the fungal mycelium has grown through that bag, mm -hmm. um, then we can expand that further. So we do that into these bags of uh, sawdust right. and, and wheat bran. And this is empowering for people because you can take this and plant it into the logs and plant it into your, your mushroom bed. So the primary mycelium grows out on the grain and then goes into a secondary substrate to fruit, right? That's right. So something that's always so interesting to me is how sensitive mushrooms and mycelium are to the different temperatures. So could you speak a bit to the stages of mushroom growth and temperature and how we change and work with that? Absolutely, temperature makes a big difference when it's cold they grow very slowly. When it's warm, they grow quickly. And it's the same um, with the mycelium as with the actual mushroom being produced. So we use that to our advantage when we want to grow the, the kits in the sawdust spawn, then we have them in, I call it the hot room. So we keep it at a you know room temperature and uh, it grows very quickly. And that encourages the mycelium to grow, right? The mycelium grows through the bag. And uh, some species, will grow quicker than others, um, but overall they, they like just a nice warm temperature. Uh, and then once the bag is fully colonized with the mycelium, if we don't do something, they're going to fruit. Right. <laughs> so, so we then take them out and we put them in cold storage. Um, cold storage just delays that, that progress of growth and mm. um, making the mushrooms so that we can keep them at a nice fresh stage before um, sending them out to people. So if people want to grow them then at home, once they've got sent a bag or once they have like this ready to grow setup, 
they want to warm it up, right? Yes, you want to warm it up. Um, you, uh, if you want to just make mushrooms right out of the bag, you simply cut the bag open. Mm. Um, in an, uh, like a, Do you like poke a, holes or cut it? Uh, we usually cut like an X is yep. one easy way to do it. And uh, that sort of creates some flaps, some uh, flaps that keep it sheltered and more humid in there. And uh, mm. the mushrooms will emerge right out of the bag. Um, you mm. can also take that and... Um, expand it into another container full of right. straw, for instance, and then uh, poke holes into the bucket where the mushrooms will fruit out of that bag. To grow it out even bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Which is exciting. I mean, that like there's, there's a never ending amount of different ways. But something you spoke to that I wanted to just sort of touch in on was um, moisture. You know, you keep create flaps on with that X in order to produce moisture or keep it moist. Can you speak a bit more to that? I saw you spraying some of the mushrooms to keep yes. them vibrant. How would we manage and or grow as we're Moisture doing Moisture has got to be the, the most important uh, factor. So both the, the moisture content of the substrate they're growing in, be mm. that a log or a bag of sawdust, and the environmental humidity is very key. We're talking very high humidity, uh, like 85, 95% humidity is ideal for the mushrooms to start emerging out of the bag. Mm. Um, if it dries out, you're not gonna have good success. So that's, that's really key. Right, so keeping the humidity in, which obviously as you produce the bags, you're you're moistening all the sawdust and warming it up and kind of creating that environment that is ideal for the mycelium to run. Um, and then in order to get it fruiting, we might have a humid environment outside as well. That's right. Mm. So like a bathroom might be a place, <laughs> lots right. of hot showers <laughs> might be a good place to grow your bags. That's right. Yeah. You, you need also just a, a little bit of light. It doesn't have to be lots of light, but mm. some indirect light. If you could read a book by it, it's enough light. So a bathroom is a perfect place. So yep. you can have a shower or a bath with your mushroom mycelium. <laughs> <laughs> My colonize in there with them. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, okay. And what else, like what other, I mean, would we spray the bag or how how would we um encourage that growth say we weren't in a bathroom setting say we were in yeah the 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 desert situation of a, of a living that's room that's right <laughs> uh, that, that's right growing at home uh, it, like near it, a fireplace or something exactly where it's... in the winter time in particular people have trouble keeping their mushroom kits humid um because wood stove or electric heat dries out the home so we there's you know real simple setups that you can rig up from having just simply a clear plastic bag with holes in it that you mist inside um, to setting up a shelf unit with draping plastic over it. Right. Uh, you can also um, get a mini greenhouse and, and put a, a room humidifier in there. So then, then it goes up to, you know, people get- and Scale more, from scale there, right? Up, um, <laughs> and have more, more, uh, more il elaborate uh, fruiting chambers. Yeah, I like the idea of, of that, like just a, a shelf with a plastic draped over top of it, really simple, low key, maybe in a basement, right? Not in a, although you want it to be warm enough, so there's kind of a catch-22 there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that there's always, that is the most common challenge people encounter is um, you've got to do the dance between keeping really high humidity and allowing enough air exchange. Right. So, you know, you can seal that bag right up tight and it keeps it really humid in there but, but once the mushrooms start emerging they also need to mm. kind of get out of their metabolites because they're yeah. breathing out carbon dioxide just like people do totally um so so the carbon dioxide builds up mm. and that creates the mushrooms to stretch kind of like a, a plant seedling does when it doesn't get enough light or like a teenager it, it, does at my house <laughs> <laughs> they want to get out of there. They don't want us to trap it. Oh. Exactly. So you got to give. So you, you got to balance enough humidity with mm. air exchange. Right. So they're the like conflicting problems there. Yeah, but I mean, really, what we're trying to do here is mimic nature, right? And we see a lot of these fruit in the fall when there is that kind of past that warm time in the summer, but then the humidity comes back. So really that's what we're trying to do at home when we're fruiting. Yeah, yeah, too. well, you, so you can do it outside. 
mm -hmm. and let it be by the force of nature. And I have to admit, I'm a bit of a lazy gardener type, and I'm mm. also an experimenter. Don't we call that so... permaculture, the lazy gardener type? <laughs> so I love, I just love to see what it does, like push the limits with the mycelium. And mm. I have had mushroom kits sitting on my porch all winter long, absolutely astounded to see the lion's mane. The, yeah, just... it, it, it was growing. We were going down to minus 10. The whole mushroom would freeze solid. It would warm up again and it would continue to grow. And wow. I just find that absolutely a phenomenal. So, so cool. So on one hand, they're really sensitive at certain stages. And on another hand, it's so resilient. And, and you literally can't hold them back yeah. when the mushroom is ready to fruit it will make a mushroom. For sure. I mean, like the shiitake logs we were at just, just a minute ago was like, there was snow here, I know, yeah. not that long ago. Yeah. And they're still fruiting. That's right. Very cool.